my viewers, we're going to get uh, game number 10 underway. This is season number four, Chase the Bracelet. Uh, going into tonight's game, uh, I believe it's Dan Crafton that's the uh, chip point leader? Uh, t uh, point leader? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. And uh, starting stack is 6,000 in chips. Uh, blinds are 18 minutes, starting uh, 25.50, and I'm going to get the clock started here. We're ready to go. Uh, take it away, commentators. Welcome, everybody. I'd like to welcome Trevor to the uh, broadcast booth. Thank you very much. It's uh, very, very exciting to be here. So what are you looking forward to seeing tonight, Trevor? I, I'd, I'd like to see a lot of aggression. You know, I watch at home weekly, and... Uh, I see there's a lot of spots people can take advantage of picking up blinds or just repping big hands and uh, Chris giving, calls 50. giving a lot of chips. So we'll see if they can uh, take care of that tonight. Robert calls 50. Moskowitz raises to 150. Very passive early, especially. Yeah, everyone likes to test the waters and see who's uh, see who's going to come after it tonight. Well, except for Marco. Marco's pretty much always aggressive. Yeah, Marco hasn't yet to find the fold button. As of now, we'll see if uh, that keeps up tonight. I assume it, it will. <laughs> Chris calls 150. Robert calls 150. Chris filling in for Max tonight. Let's see what kind of finish he can do for him. Checks over to Moskowitz. Bets 300. We can hardly hear the players at all, Tony. Can you? Uh, I will try to adjust that for you. Now I can't hear anything. <laughs> and now I got nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Can you hear anything? No. Okay. There we go. That's there we go. There well, I'm never going to be able to do that again, so I'm folding. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone redistribute the chip. Let's start over. There was no audio. Yeah, that's real good. That's a big difference. Who's the other commentator tonight? Uh, Trevor. Max. Max. Is that his poker name or somebody actually named him? Are we pulled to the blinds here? Uh, two players. Just kidding. Bobby pulled in small. Bobby. Bobby playing like Nit Romney tonight. 150 bet by Chris Wood. Or 125 bet by Chris Wood. Chris Benton is flush draw. In there with Jeff Five. You, uh, played with Chris several times, and you'll see him with hands like that quite a bit. Yeah, he has no fear. He he likes to uh, put the pedal to metal and make his opponent make mistakes. I've never seen that. First sack will be Paul Moskowitz. Marco with sevens, Corey with twos. I doubt we'll see Corey in here. <laughs> Real tight. Marco raises to 150. Marco keeping things going as he like Corey calls. normally do. Corey did call. I'm surprised. If Corey could make a set here. He could uh, definitely make some money off of Marco. If not, his whole stack. Robert calls. Rob says, why not? Checks. And flop second Checks. pair. Both players. Let's see if uh, Marco is able to represent anything here and take down the pot. I don't like to check on the flop or turn by Marco here. If you're gonna, if you're gonna be that aggressive pre-flop, you might as well continue with the hand. Robert bets 225. This allows, allows the world to get there. Now 
Not sure what Mark was thinking about here. He's thinking about a, a later career in Hollywood. <laughs> See what kind of uh, starlets he can acquire. Corey's thinking. This would be a very ill timed check raise with Rob sitting on three tens here. Even though his hand is fairly disguised. Corey calls? Yeah, I think he's just going to call. I was just going to say, I think he's just calling. That's a curious play by Corey. He doesn't usually. Uh, Back himself into kind of those kinds of corners, trying to get information. I mean, it, in most cases, that's just an information call. Hmm. Action on Mark first. Chris with pocket eights. Oh. Suited down with a jack queen. I could see uh, Bobby and Chris getting into a little bit of a tussle here. A little meta game. Oh, oh, Bobby five. with fives. Suited Dan raises to 175. What are the top three places right now? Who's in first right now? Bobby calls. Bobby dropped, right? I can, see, I can see Chris throw a three bet out here on the button. Let's see what Chris does with the eight. Dan's capable of raising light. Bobby in position behind Dan could obviously be calling light. Chris calls. But Robert no, calls. No harm in calling there. Train, tell the button not to splash your pot. Sir, please don't splash my pot. <laughs> Paul calls. See who gets lucky here. Paul calls with the jack. Ten. Five players. Ten on well, the uh, Max gets <laughs> real lucky. <laughs> Chris flops quads. <laughs> From what I hear, you have to phone ahead for those, those kinds of flops. Everybody checks. Oh, and now Paul Moskowitz has an open end and straight. Open end and straight for Paul, and Bob might think his fives are still good here. No one's shown any strength, and. Uh, He's got a pair in the hole, and he might think he's got the table beat right now. Bobby bets 370, uh, 350. Bobby does bet. A smallish bet. He's, he wants to make sure if someone comes over the top, he's not uh, going to get in too much trouble. Chris Ward calls. As the book says, Chris flats behind. Rob thinking about his three here. Please call us. This, this is awesome. Robert calls. Chris is just doing cartwheels <laughs> inside right now. And Paul even even with the pair board, Paul isn't getting terrible odds right now. It calls an open down straight draw. He gets braided so often for playing so tight, I think this might be his spot where he calls, <laughs> calls. just to show tight. everyone that he oh, is not he that player. Oh, he hits the straight. Don't be a five. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, that's ugly. Bob, I, Bob might be joining us in the booth sooner than we thought. Well, I tell you what, I've seen Bobby get away from some hands that a lot of people can't. But I feel like he has a bit of a war with Chris, though. Oh, does he? I think I think this might turn to a uh, Bobby bets 1,000. A bit of a pissing match here. If Bob would just turn to his left and see how comfortable Chris is, he might be able to pick off something. See how much he raises here. 2250. Chris, Chris raises to 2750. Bobby does have his thinking face on. We'll see if he uh, snap jams thinking that Chris just has an eight. Bobby all in. Instant yeah, call Bobby by Chris. Bobby is out. 
Several people at the table oh, very oh, excited. Oh, oh, oh. Keep it on! You're saying there's a chance. Plot, plot. Dan is doing his best to hide his happiness right now. As the current point leader. Bobby has 25 left in his deck. Oh, wow. I thought he was out. Look at the time. Chip and a chip. I just said two points. I just keep it had that been a thousand yards from the horseshoe, he maybe thought a little longer before he shipped his stack. Marco to act first. We'll see how cool the deck is. Chris has picked up aces. Yeah, I think. Sorry, oh, Max, this is a tough game for you to sit out, buddy. Yeah, and you did good earlier, you did what you now. It was, it was a pleasure being here, guys. I think Bob should <laughs> fold just because it's funny. <laughs> why not? I mean, there's, a, there's potential for someone to get knocked out. He's in Moskowitz mode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to be in the kitchen. I'm going to go buy him a work bag. It's 250 now. Just raised to 250. I have a big blind, and I know I'm going to push back. Yeah, I don't play. Let's see what Dan does with his fours with one of them being dead already. Oh, wait. Even I can call. Mark might call there. Dan, is, Dan will fold. Dan calls. Dan will like It's kind of cool. I thought he just had an eight 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 eight. And he flops eight. Wow. I thought he had eight nine. Flop better, Chris. Both Flop better. Check. I don't know if that's possible. Um, closer review. Oh, oh. Did Bobby save his? Chris has 300. That's how I mean. Well, so you Dan calls. You know what? Uh, who's getting the cards? <laughs> no substitutes. <laughs> No, uh, is this how you beat no. Paul? Yeah. Just like this? I just got cards after cards after cards? Quads and then top I know. Paul said he won like five. Give him one of those little fucking earpieces. Yeah, yeah especially when it goes check, check, flop. Yeah. 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 If you always have enough, you don't have to know what anyone else has. Somebody just quadruple up. Oh, wouldn't that have been sweet if, like, Dan had that quad game or something? You never know, dude. If I... If I win one, you get mad, you might come back and win. I know. <laughs> if I win one, it's so early in the game so right now. So got the button now. So the damn is seven eight at heart. Bobby right. will definitely be stuffing it with his two threes here. We'll get you trying to get lucky. No over pairs at the time, but. All in. Good luck, Bob. See the end calls. Bobby all in. <laughs> Let's see what Chris does here with 7 5 all. Yeah, he's going to come in and try Chris to calls. Uh, Robert calls. Yeah. Paul Moskowitz yeah. calls. Mark's, yeah. Mark calls. Let's see how cruel the deck can be. Maybe we'll have a flop five. Marco checks his out. I'm going to do that one time. Come on, who's going to do that one time? All right. Who's going to do that one time? I would have probably put it in my pocket and saved it for later. Oh, you did? No, I'm kidding. He probably like three fours. Marco flops three fours. Of course. I mean, it's one's all around. I really feel like I have no shot. Oh, yeah. Chris Ward bets 250. Chris Ward bets 250. Chris bets his 5 7. What? I mean, everyone, everyone probably assumes that he has quads right now. Minimum, minimum deuce is full. I fold to the next level. He's scared. He's like, he doesn't have quad fours, he's got quad deuces. Marco calls 250. Oh. Well, Bob, it's been real, guys. Yeah. Good, job. Good game, Bob. <laughs> Bob, pretty much needs his feet. I'm going to go to the booth right now. There you go. You're going to vote up here, Bobby. I, don't, I didn't see any mock pre flop, so let's see if he has two live outs. Chris bets 700. Chris with his 5 7 and no chance of winning. He thought he accumulated too many chips early. He wants to give some back to the field. 1750. 1750 raise by Marco. Chris Folds. That really that line. Uh, yeah. You have an out. Two outs. Wait, what? Two outs. Wait, wait, I get a side top, right? Can you really card the shirt? Thanks, buddy. I need to do it. Fine. Did I put the ball on the river this time? Five parts on the river. Just for karma. 
Nope. Alright guys, let's be real. Bob says good. Bye. Bye. <laughs> That's it for Bobby. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we appreciate your company. Come back and watch us too. We're good. I guess Bobby can talk about how bad he played that cool house. Oh, I'm sure he'll be in real quick. I was trying to steal it. I was playing it up. Yeah, I'm playing it up. Yeah, I'm playing it up. Hello, fans. Uh, that was a little bit of a wasn't it? No, I mean, I just, I play bad. You know, you know, sometimes I make bad decisions, and um, I hit the five on the river, and, you know, you know, but I, you know, but I just, I need to read more, study, you know. He could have had 8-9. I mean, he raised me on the river. I mean, there is some concern to, to be folding, but it's kind of hard. I mean, you hit your gen card. You, I, I hit the undercover secret card that I feel like. As it was being turned, I said no five. <laughs> and it was a five. I thought I meant to be impartial, but 125 raised by Ed. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I mean, I look at it as a core anyway, but to be honest. I don't know. Even pre-flop, I could have folded, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of folding. Pre-flop, I probably should have bet the turn either, but I wanted. I mean, everybody checked through twice, and like, I'm gonna. Well, like my third call. We figured that once, mm -hmm. once no one showed strength, you have a pair. I mean, it looks like a bunch of big cards. Why not take a stab? Mark yeah. first stab. Your stab size, I thought was pretty good. The pot about seven. Yeah. What else? Half pot. You said I didn't understand. Half pot, just to maybe keep somebody that's drawing to yeah. like a club draw, or maybe just picked up a straight draw with the nine, or. Absolutely. What? Oh, I anything really just to right at maybe you take it down. Yeah. Yeah. There actually were two yeah. straight draws in here. Yeah. So I mean, I didn't mind the bet, and then. On the river, I mean, obviously, I was thought I was value betting. Um, there's only a few games that beat me at that point. I mean, First act will be which, Dan. A, a lot of them I don't know. Would play like pocket nines. I wasn't scared really. I, mean, I feel like that's pre pot to get raised. I'm not sure. I feel like pocket nines probably click back, click back the the turn. Yeah. To go to pot. Well, especially with the straight draw, picking up the straight draws and the flush draws, it seems like that's something. Especially when you know your image of being a guy that will build a pot or push right. people off a pot, people want to bloat it and get it going when they have such a strong hand. Well, we got a big right. hand brewing here. Oh. There we go. Ed with Queens and Chris playing for Max with the East Queen. I can't wait for Max to watch us and see all Chris the Chris raises to 225. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would have probably played them way different. I, I believe he may have shoved um, pre-flop. Um, I'm not too sure though. I think we, I think <laughs> I can't the, call it. When he would have flopped quads, he would have raised to 600 by Marco. Thought about folding on the river when you bet. I what? If you would have looked to your left a little bit, I think you could have seen raised to 1300 yeah. 1, by Ed. Well, I mean, I haven't really played with, with Chris too much, and um, so do we have a three bet here. It's kind of hard to say. I mean, I still look at it as a cooler regardless. I may have been able to get away from it on the river and save oh, yeah, like yeah, half my stack, but. It um, literally was a gin card in the river. I, I just felt like I was I was getting it in and there. And, I mean, you run into quads. It's not not too often that happens. That'll be the talk yeah, of Chris Fultz. That, that hand. No, it wasn't that cool. I'm just kidding. Looks <laughs> 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 like we had a three bet there. And, uh, Chris Fultz is ace queen. And it's best. taking down Queen's Rays. Oh. Marco calls. Marco, Marco calls. says... Right. Mm -hmm. F your raise. I'm suited and I'm gonna get there. And um, or <laughs> or else wait until the scariest flop ever comes out <laughs> versus queens. Ed can't like this. Ed goes Terminator. Action on Ed. <laughs> he's looking. He's looking at Marco like, what on earth do you call me with? 12.50 bet by Ed. Marco called these queens. Yeah. Okay. I feel like he's kind of here to gamble today. Like, I think Marco he's... Folds. Oh, nice yeah. Marco throws us a curveball. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just when you think you haven't figured out. <laughs> and that's a spot where Marco could get away with a check raise because his hand range is so infinite that Queens will shrink up in a heartbeat. Well, one of the things, too, is Ed is a very... Probably one of the tighter players at the table, too. So I, I think Marco, with that flop, is like... Uh. There's only a couple that play. <laughs> now, if, if that was me in Ed's spot, I think Marco would have <laughs> raised because that's just how he is. No, he, he does that a lot. He does that. Especially to the point leaders. Look at Ed. Just just picking up the hands. I said just give it to me. Give me everything. I feel like Marco's going to play too. Chris calls 100. 
Marco, oh, yeah, he, suited, his full button dapper. was left in his car. Especially <laughs> when he looks down at a Jack 9 suited, there's no getting away from that. Chris calling under the gun. Marco calls 100. <laughs> well, that's the way he rolls, man. He just doubled up really early. I well, think he can. Crazy. Even if he hadn't have doubled up, he'd have been limping. He, he plays a ton of hands early. Ed calls I knew 100. That. That's, suited Dan that's another option. thing that I thought maybe he was. He was trying to use the points card. You know, like he knew I was not trying to go out and maybe he would. Action on Ed. Do something Checks. weird. Ed did not raise the Ace King suited. Um, yeah. Chris, ra- Chris <laughs> bets 300. <laughs> I don't really follow that logic any day of the week. I think you have to Marco probably calls. use a crowbar to get Marco off of this hand now. <laughs> Flopping up and down. Or gut shot, rather. Gut, yeah. yeah. He's got a gut. And, uh, I feel like Sundays is the day you can limp Ace King. Um, suited especially. Any Sunday you want. And you got uh, Sunday's nine. is limp. There it is. Chris bets 1100. See, this is what limping with 5-4 does to you. Well, it's almost like you have to maneuver around to scare the flops out of position. Marco oh, folds. And he does it. Marco is playing uh, way different yeah. than he's Marco had a lobotomy apparently yesterday <laughs> and didn't tell anyone. <laughs> We're finding out right now, right in front of your eyes. <laughs> Chris, Chris, I mean, he's using his chip stack early. You yeah. Know? Oh, I mean, he absolutely will. He can't win a tournament in a half an hour, but he will try his hardest to do so. <laughs> Robert Tack first. The thing with Chris, if you get a hand against Chris, just keep checking it to him because he's just going to keep holding. Yeah, I mean. That was my plan. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you get nuts, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Chris is rewriting the, the book on three-barreling. <laughs> Basically, the book goes, never stop three-barreling. <laughs> Ed raises to it's 225. It's not a long book, and actually there's a couple pictures <laughs> of just barrels. Of yes, things. there's wooden barrels, there's barrels rolling down hills. Chris all calls. Above. Chris calls out of the big blind with Jeff. Three suited. Um, I will give him it. It is suited, so... And... He Obviously, pair. he is. Let's, let's, see. let's see if he turns his hand into a bluff as well. Ed bets 350. I think uh, I'll take Chris Eddie calls. <laughs> Especially against Ed. I mean, Ed's limping ace king. I mean, this hand, I mean, he's he's floating, but it, he thinks he might have the, actually the best hand right now. Ed bets. We're not. No. He Chris Fold. Off he had a pair. I did that. I did it so fast. Was that a raise? Uh, Ed raised and Chris folded. Did Ed raise his flop back? No, you got to turn. Oh. turn it, you bet. But moves for stack will be Paul Moss Switch. So <laughs> yeah, I want to witness somebody get cooler just out of spite. And uh, preferably Dan Crafton. I, I really would like Dan Crafton to get cooler. Um, first off, he does make amazing calls. Um, but we won't talk about that. Uh, not, n- has nothing to do with why I want to see him get cored. Ed, just the points. Ed just won't stop, can't stop. <laughs> He's getting it. Mark raises to 300. I believe, I, I would like to see him just flat call here. Jokes. Uh, I got jokes. If you get a couple people in front of him, I think he's got to raise it, though. Yeah. Mark opened here. Yes, Mark uh, raised to 300. Yeah, I would definitely like a three bet. Why not? He's been fairly active. and he might For sure. Just raised to 700 by Ed Wurgler. Did he raise? Yeah, he raised his 700. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I was just kidding, obviously, about calling. <laughs> I never recommend calling. Maybe from the button, if you know that the blinds are tight and they're going to fold. Just kind of disguise, but... Where's the current button right now? Uh, action is on mark. It's the 75. But button is on uh, suited Dan. Okay. So Ed does have position in his hand, and he has control. Like if, uh, Mark did call. Mark calls and flops the nut plus draw. He's so good at that. I swear, that every hand I play against this guy, he flops the flush draw. He will get there. And he, he gets there by plane, train, automobile, some way. I okay. am fairly certain that the Queen of Clubs is coming on the turn. I Ed bets 1,000. I, I, there's something in my pants. <laughs> um, no, I didn't mean pants. Bob, Wait. Bob's been Mark the, calls 1,000. Bob's been doing the call cards. <laughs> <laughs> that word calls. 
Okay, I meant on the river. That's a partial and now he's picked up the straight draw, too. He's got the gutter ball with the fuss draw. Yeah. He's got the ace, I would, the club, and I wouldn't nine. mind a... Uh, Mark checks. A, a check raise jam isn't isn't the best play, but... Well, like that. we said, dude, we have a tight player. 1,200 bet by Ed. I mean, I feel like Ed recognizes that one pair isn't as strong as people make it out to be. Yeah. If Marco would just go to the gut sometime, I can right see he, he wants to... Mark announces a raise. There you go, Mark. Mark he wants to make these plays. Mark is all in. Nice. That's boy. That's how you do I it. I like this a lot. 29.50. Especially with the point structure. You know, everyone's trying to outlast the last person. Yeah. It's so tough, too. To get, even if he's wrong, and I mean, even if he gets called, he's going to win 40% of the time. Huh. Well, I mean, 10s and 8s are in his range. I mean... If we could get a shot on Ed and see if his eyes are turning red like the Terminator, <laughs> that would be. <laughs> this is a huge hand this right is, here. This is, I mean, this is this would be a great call in my opinion. I, th I think I think in Mark's position, it's really hard to uh, think one pair's good. And does he want to gamble? Mark RFC put his gambling pants on. Ed go. calls. Will he get it? Uh, here comes the Queen of Clubs. I, f I feel like, well, now it'll be out of spite. I, I, I feel like oh, deuce of clubs. Or like it's a red seven because it's the annoying way to get there. Yes, <laughs> yes. Please train, um, if you're listening to me, red seven. Okay. Yeah, coming right up. Four spades on the river. And that's not yeah, it. It was black, but not the black he was looking for. Well, today is uh, just one of those days. I mean, usually we get to the first break without losing one, and here we lost two. Uh, it's a tough call, but then on the other hand, you know, what is he? I mean, the only thing he's really repping, I think, is pocket sixes. No, no, Mark. I'll be in the kitchen eating. Making on a turn? Because what else? I mean, I don't. I think. I think. It, didn't he check call the, on the way flop? The preflop went. I don't think Mark is raising a preflop with six. I think he's limping. I could see him raising with eight or nines. Mark the call. I think those sets show up a little bit more often. I'm just saying when that flop comes and he check calls. And also a hand Mark will play a lot in. Raised to 425 by Corey. Oh, absolutely. He does I mean, that a lot. He could have, could have had 10 8 very well. Could have had 10 8. Absolutely. Or Jack 9. And then trying to get there. It's hard. It's hard to put people on ranges in this chase to bracelet because everybody's trying to outplay each other. I mean, people, and plus the sample size at this point, you know, there's hundreds of hands under everyone's belt. So there's there's memory there's there's previous hands playing into yeah. uh, into account on each on each hand. Like getting called by a king jack when I squeeze. Not exactly. Good because everyone knows you are a loose donkey. <laughs> they can't ever <laughs> just sit back and not squeeze. Marco calls. <laughs> Two players. If I squeeze, sure. I don't mean to hug people. <laughs> I wish there was a stat on my how often I squeezed in this tournament. Because that would be every opportunity. <laughs> Couple air balls here. Let's see if, uh, 600 bet by Corey. If Marco re respects Corey's range here. Yeah. Marco folds. This is one person he, I think he'll fold to. Yeah. 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 I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. 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 I mean, everybody's pretty much on auto fold button on flops that they don't hit against them. Other than hearing Suda Dan laugh, I didn't know he was going to the table. Corey Dan. He's made first. one raise, and other than that, he's just in. Pretty content. I think he's still uh, excited that Bob has been knocked out and he's gonna yeah. maintain the top of the leaderboard. And I think he's just gonna try to ride it out and accumulate as many points as possible. Yeah, this uh, today really hurt my feelings. I am uh, I'm probably gonna get knocked down a lot. I just assumed you missed me and you just went to the same I'm pretty sure. Agreed. <laughs> I am pretty sure oh, that Rob picking up the <coughs> team. Rob getting his turn at the ladies. Chris with an ace nine suited. I, I just want somebody to Chris um, raises to three twenty five quads and, and then somebody else river a boat and get cooler just like I did. I mean I, I would love to see it. Raised to one thousand by Robert. Standard three bet by Rob. <laughs> Chris is opening a lot of hands here. 
And Chris Holtz. But he has a disappointment fold here. Well, Rob doesn't three bet very often. You didn't want to know that. And when he does, it's usually a pretty big game. He also showed Queen. Is the cat that uh, go yeah. when he stands up? Yes. Yeah. That's a hot move. <laughs> <laughs> That's a move. I'm uh, working it. Work. Well, he got kings to pull pre-flop. It's going to work in my repertoire. <laughs> I remember that. That, that, was, that was one of the first first games of the season, and I'm watching on my computer going, That didn't just happen. This guy, <laughs> this guy never wants to get called ever, and he's got the best starting hand in poker. <laughs> Ed Foltz, 9-10 suited. There. Oh, man. I understand seeing all the cards makes your thought process just go a little crazy. Chris calls crazy, 100. But you, see those, you see those suited connectors, and you just want to get it in there. <laughs> I want to play a pot anyway. Especially, you know. Five. Raised to 500 you got, you got, by Marco. You got Dan, your left, playing tighter than anything. I mean, Chris could come at you a little bit, but Paul's also playing super tight. Why not get going? And once again, then Marco's back to when he makes the huge raise, he's got not much. Yes, very st- yeah. that is I absolutely just, standard play in, in Marco's realm. Suited Dan Dak first. He over-raises the trap hands, and then when he gets premium hands, he calls. I mean, he's gonna party. This is the poker game slash party for him. <laughs> as long as he's smiling, life's good. <laughs> this is a uh, definitely an interesting dynamic for the remainder of the game. We'll see what Marco's opening raise is here. Chris got kings. Of course, Marco's standard. Got tens. <laughs> got a call. Standard. <laughs> 300 bet. If by only I could get Sudan. cards like these, I think Chris. I would raise win. Raised to 1100 by Chris. Sudan raises in early position with King 10 off. Sudan must have heard me wondering if he was still at the table. <laughs> Maybe he's getting bored. I don't know. Let's see what Marco does at tens here. Did could Chris just black call? Bet? No, he raised. raised. Okay. I'm gonna say that would be say, a could sick. Could we see a four bet here? How awesome would it have been? Marco calls. Oh, we don't get those very often. Yeah, four bets. Yeah. Stack sizes don't usually uh, allow for that kind of play, but a four bet would show some serious strength. He just called, right? Suited folds. Dan makes the wise yeah. decision. Yeah, Marco called. But yeah, how sick would it have been if he would have flat it and then Mar- Marco would have raised it? Right. What was that? I am surprised that wasn't 9-9 nine, nine king. Honestly. <laughs> all in and a call. Okay, Marco got it all in with tens. Wow. <laughs> that was uh, surprising. That Not that just really. Was it checked to him? Four of diamonds. He's all in. He, uh, I believe, was first to act. Seven of clubs. Oh, yeah. the Marco, the Marco does that kind of stuff. Oh, Marco quite off. Yeah. Huh. That's why I was wondering if it was check. That was a very sneaky check by Chris. I'm not a, a huge uh, proponent so of three betting pre flop yeah. and checking. And then checking. Flops. Yeah. I mean, well, a lot of players will notice that's kind of suspicious. Yeah. Chris has watched Marco all year. I've seen him make moves like that. That is true. All year. If anyone, if anyone has a playbook on Marco, yeah. it would have been Chris. Chris Wardak first. Yeah, well, assuming he's not back in his, spinning in his chair. Yeah. <laughs> is this still the same? <laughs> well, see, I don't feel as bad. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but still, it's it's pretty early still, and I, I don't feel as bad about going out. Corey Day's king here. Ed with ace 10. Chris calls 100. I feel like with only two games left after Robert this, it's going to be a very hard comeback with the way the point structure is. I'm going to have to... <laughs> Some crazy things are going to have to happen for me to move up up there. LDP, if you've been at Lockdown Poker, mm-hmm. maybe read some more books. <laughs> That's the very Raised to 450 by Corey. After rivering a boat. Yeah. You can Corey also raises here with Ace King on the button. Please, sir, don't be so aggressive with my cards. Fold, 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 snap, folds all around. Very <laughs> standard play. All players fold. You know, a more oh, aggressive player raising that a that button one? might not get as much respect. Comes to me, Robert Tack first. He gets major respect now. If I raise her, I'd probably get shoved on. And then I fold it. By the 8 3. What do I need to do? And then the flop would come up 8 8 3 3 8. 
Word. Can you make quad splurge one time? They would do their best. I'm for. I'm for. Is that really? Their secret says. I honestly feel like I don't know how to play poker anymore. I kind of forgot. Like at the beginning of the season, I knew how. Every hand. I tell you what. They. They must have really liked me down here. Because every hand I played, they were like, "Oh, he's really good." Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Paul is so con so concerned about people calling him a nit, a tightwad. I think that's what happens to him. He's that he level himself. He, to, he literally he literally does what he'll level himself to avoid ridicule from the other players at the table. And, Corey Call. And these two handsome gentlemen in the booth. Player. So I count Which four. Hand, I count four hands and gentlemen. Suited Dan uh, called we'll also. Have, we'll, we'll give Bobby a, a pass on that. Bobby's the cutest one here. I think. Six hundred bet by Paul Moskowitz. <laughs> we can reach it five five five. <laughs> you can uh, all all the fans out there. Um, you can post on Facebook on Chase the Bracelet Facebook page uh, who you think is the cutest player. Um, <laughs> Player, trainer. player, not, not play, a play, uh, <laughs> but player. Uh, Raised to 1500 by Corey. Wow, good move by Corey. Corey, there. Corey just raised on the turn there. Dan folded the AC. He kind of has to. I mean, it's getting oh, a little yeah. draw scare. He definitely wants to charge a flush draw. Um, or if there's a weaker ace, he, he could get value from that too. And especially how how Paul's reputation is, I'm sure he's going to try to get value from maybe Paul having a weaker ace. Well, Paul's not this long. He's bold. 900 for Paul to call. You'd be surprised. He's been doing a lot of different things. I think he's been trying to change up his game. This, this well, is, he has, but he'll do it quick. Yeah. When he when he waits That's this true. long. When he, when he wants to uh, ship it in the middle, he usually stacks his chips up, slams yeah. in the middle, and just crosses his hands. He'll, and he'll pick up the golf ball, look at his cards, and then muck. Yep, those are the same two. There he goes. And he, he's just... And, and then he's going to think about it. Man, every time against this if kid. If only he knew he made a great fold there. <laughs> you know what the best part is? When we go on break, I'm going to tell him he got bluffed. No. <laughs> oh, you, you shouldn't. You should not say anything about Train, it. don't laugh. You're giving away our tails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul's super good at reading people, and I'm pretty sure he's eyeing you down right now. See you to Dan Dak first. the glasses. What are you guys' opinion on sunglasses at the table? Um, I don't mind them, except for Paul's. Uh, they were cover girl glasses. I was going to say, that so. when, if you're going to wear ladies' glasses at the table, it just loses. You know? I don't know if you caught that episode when, when, they, when he didn't realize that it said cover girl on the side, and then he ripped it out. I did. I, uh, Hilarious. I was a participant in that, that viewing session. That's I've only I've only worn sunglasses one time. And that's when I was doing my Chris Ferguson impression. Me too. Chris Ward calls. And it drove me Robert crazy. Robert calls. I like to stare people down and... Make them make bad decisions. It drove me crazy, and I, for some Paul weird Mark reason, I felt like I couldn't hear. I honestly, I had the same, I had the same instance. <laughs> yeah, he had the same feeling. It's weird. It's you, when you put it's the that sun, sensory deprivation. It's like you, messes up your you, like, head. You checks his lose, option. Uh, part of your senses. And you, uh, I think it's because when like sounds, when people talk, you can't like really see as clearly as you were, and it like. Makes it, I don't know. It's science. Somebody Google it. Top pair from Moskowitz. We got her ball for Rob. If anybody has any comments, post on Facebook, um, you know, about the glasses and not hearing thing. If if you have any science behind that logic, Moskowitz bets. We would love to hear it. How much did he bet? Call 425. Call 425. Rob bet the gut shot. Why not? Usually like 50% of the time. Why not? Deuce. Bink. <laughs> I called okay, it. Okay, and uh, that's, that's what we sorry, call it. I meant 60 oh, see now, you get, you Robert bets eight, 800. A, a nine here would just now be Paul is just Paul calls. tilting. A Paul's like on a mini tilt. He's not even thinking this throw through. A jack, throw a jack up there just a to make life or a jack un unbelievable. Would just be awful. Ooh. Oh, he gets two deuces. Oh, that's going to make, I think that makes Paul feel 1600 bet by oh, Robert. Paul is so confident out there now. He's got, he's gonna put him on a flush draw. I'm, I swear, I, I'm pretty sure he's gonna put him on the flush draw. I think, I think, and I think, think he's gonna fold. I think he's gonna fold. No, he doesn't no want he's, pass, he's already never raising, but calling more often not. Ooh, I think he's gonna fold. Do we have an approximation in Paul's stack? Paul has about three thousand. Thanks, Train. So that's half his stack. Yeah, is. Paul hates getting bluffed. He hates being, being that guy. Well, and he knows Rob's capable of doing crazy stuff, too. I mean, Rob Rob will bet sometimes with air, but a lot of times he gets there. A lot of times he has a hand when he's, he's betting on the river. He's been, he's been working really hard on getting there, and as you <laughs> see in his hand, it's really paying off. Not to mention his ab work. So what's going through Rob's mind right now? Please call. Please call. <laughs> please, 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 please raise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please go all in. I think if he'd have good, yeah, I think, yeah, good fold, I think Paul. Never Paul show folds. those folds. Never. Never show a hand ever unless a dealer forces you to do so. Or, you or can, mob asks you or you to show the yeah. Or you have bluffed <laughs> and somebody they show the hand. and you know you can set off. 
This is true. I do have a, a very I'm good track record. I'm of. sitting very close to one right now. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I admit it. I think there's, about there's eight no times. There's no worse loser in poker than me. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I'm not a winning player myself. I just hit bad beats. Stays on. <laughs> Next on Chris Ward to act first. Chris Ward playing for Max. That's the only way, I, you know. I can't believe Norman Chag is paid to do this. This <laughs> <laughs> is amazing. He's very creative, though. He I is. Give him that. I mean, well, it's easy to be creative when you've got all day to think about it, and then they just replay it. Yeah. So many, you're it's not sad. there doing it live. There's so many ex-wives to talk about. I imagine. Peekaboo. Um, Vanessa. No, not Vanessa. What? That's Chad Brown. No way. Who are you talking about? Norman Chad. Oh, it calls from 50. Chad Brown, and I think had cancer. So you damn check his option. He does do a little bit of commentating. Yes, he does. He did on, on uh, Vanessa. Yeah, yeah. If that Let's was possible, check. then I am uh, going to quit trying to play poker and become an announcer. Um. It's <laughs> so far so good. It's a pretty good gig. Looks like we just check the river and nine high will take it if they check it down, this which I don't think is going to happen, but absolutely will. Oh. And everyone's just mad about how they play. <laughs> like, I just give up that pot to nine high. I don't be back. <laughs> Next one on Robert first. Yeah, there's several players in this game that they don't, even when they don't have anything and the other guy's not betting, they don't think about throwing a bet out there to see if it'll win. Kind of like me. All they go is, I got six high. I Robert calls. Win. There's a lot of things to be said about that because Paul sometimes calls people will do that um, when they can make people fold a better hand, like when they have a smaller pocket pair or something, but they feel like they have showdown value, so they just check it down. Um, a lot of times a bet will take it, though, depending on the board. And I feel like showdown value is down. Corey raises to 700. I mean, just because you get showdown value doesn't mean you have to show, check exactly. the showdown. I mean, you can turn your hand into a bluff and make better hands fold. A lot of the time. So Corey made a standard raid after a uh, limp under the gun. Suited Dan calls 700. Dan has suited cards, so he's never folding. Yeah, or King Jack offset. Oh, I mean, he's yeah, going all in with it. As, Bob, oh, King Jack. as King Bobby Jack, knows, Bobby, as Bobby, yeah. Bobby know. knows, King Jack is the nuts. Yeah. Oh, too well. Robert calls. Paul says I'll get back to and form. And Paul using a little bit of common sense and just getting the hell out of the way. We'll see a, a flop set for Corey some straight draws. That's that that, that has changed a, the game a little. That's a nice flop for uh, for Rob, <laughs> not for Corey, <laughs> not for Corey for Rob. But it, he could. Here's the problem. He's gonna see bet here, and Rob's gonna call. Corey will put him on the ace, which might slow down the action on the turn. Corey, that's 1900. I think that's gonna get Dan off his straight draw for sure. Dan, you yeah, think? But yeah. I mean. Like gut Sometimes Dan likes to... I mean, I think, to I really think Dan's in fold mode. I think he really has to move up in place. I think he is too, especially playing against Corey, since Corey's in second place. I feel like Ex that absolutely. might determine something, but... Oh. And Rob is never folding a flush draw. Oh, I mean, I he's got a flush draw. I can see a raise here. Robert calls. Start. I would also. The raise would be awesome. Yep. And Both players check. And I, as well, predicted, I would, one check check. I would not be and surprised to see Rob. Dan would be I can see a little value Dan bet here from Corey. Check so. check. Wow. After Rob catches up on the river. Yeah. Robert I mean, bets 2,900. Oh, oh my. Corey, come on, buddy. Corey full. So this is one of, I think this is one of downfalls. Yeah, um, well, but the problem is we've seen Rob play how many big cases all season. That's true. So we probably put him on a big case. This is true, but. I don't think I don't think with a flush draw, Rob should ever be checking. You can never check the there. turn. Yeah, that's the turn play. The turn, the turn running into the river. I know we I know we look like sound like and look like geniuses by because we see the cards, but there's just certain certain tells and certain betting patterns you can pick up on. You could really distinguish someone's hand. Paul Dack first. Calls. calls 150. Especially like looking at his own image compared, Absolutely. like if he if he thinks how everybody views him is super tight. That, I think mean, that, that would that be might. something that if I was one of these players, I would go back and watch the film 
and see how everyone Watch perceives me because that is the biggest part of Chris calls. Not the biggest part, a huge part of your own game. Well, that's yeah, something that I had to do. Everybody think Marco's a nit. Exactly, I am. Exactly. So, I'll take my leave. See right, you, Marco. We'll see you next week, Marco. Good game. I'll be here. I might have a sub for the last two games. <laughs> You're allowed to sub. All players check. <laughs> Multi-hand. That's, no. Um, I agree. That's something I had to learn. I uh, didn't realize how All people really check. view me at the table, especially when I've been started out playing super tight the whole season and everybody thought I was a maniac. I was getting paid off. And Let's see if Paul wins this with Queen Nine here. It's hard to shake that. But it's just it's hard to realize what people think of you. Paul slow rolling with Queen Nine. As you should. <laughs> As you always should. <laughs> make them make them two blinds show their hands. They whip over to Queen High Nuts. <laughs> Corey, you want some calisthenics? I think that was a mistake of mine, actually. It being later on in the season, I started to get a little more aggressive, and it just seemed like a mistake because everybody already looked at me like I was super aggressive. So they're calling me lighter, and I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just like any other sport. You want to play what the defense gives you. If they want to you know, play back at you because they think you're opening super light... Only play the nuts. Tighten <laughs> it up. You know, it's... It's not super difficult, you know, but you have to play the hands you're given to an extent. Right. Well, Suda Dan seemed to be wanting to get in pots with you all season. Oh, yeah. He has a, a little thing yeah, with me. A little else. vendetta. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't mind it. Uh, that's what you I want. Mean, you want players to... because Bobby braids him at any given moment he can. It is true. I, I did feel bad. Ed, uh, Ed raises um, to 425. I, I thought about it. I was like, I need to quit doing that. Because I, I don't want Dan to go home See and cry. Calls. You know, I'm, I don't know if he does or not. And well, he, he got a little misty-eyed on the second break. Yeah. Talking about that's what I thought. And I just, you know, I don't want to do that to somebody. No, I'm not a mean person. I just, yeah, I like to boy. play poker, you know. And plus, you never, I mean, not to call Dan a fish, but you don't. Why you don't tap the glass, man. Exactly. <laughs> don't, hey, don't, don't, don't <laughs> goof off that, <laughs> my glass. Yeah, man. You feed it, you nurture it. You know, whatever else you do with fish, you keep them hanging around. Flush them down so the toilet. That's what I'm trying to do. This is, um, this is interesting. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is interesting. Dan flops top pair here with his jack nine. And folds. And then Ed folds the ace king. I would have, I would have probably peeled one off there. I mean, what, I mean, what can Dan really have that yeah. isn't scared on the turn? Well, and you can pick up a lot of cards on the turn that, that would scare him, too. Any, any hard scare cards that you can... Two minutes left in the blinds. Blinds are 150, 75, 150. Ed Dak first. Oh, wow. Jacks. I foresee him folding this to a raise. I foresee I'm him raising way too much and not getting any action yeah. and getting bummed out about it. He might even shove if somebody just limps in. Chris, Chris calls 150. Of course. Chris is in there with King 7. Off. Of course. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack 9 off. He's and in again, the cutoff. He's for sure raising. And again, I don't... I don't well, Paul I guess raises to 1,000. But still, it's another tight player. Why, why are you ever limping? Chris Ward calls 1,000. So did, what did it go? Limp, limp, limp? Limp, limp raised by Paul... And Call then like an 8x raise by Paul. Really? Yeah. And now this is where... We all know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. I smell a check raise by, by Paul Chris. Paul checks? Yeah. Now no, he's Chris in position. Oh, Chris, Chris checks? Yeah. Chris check. Now Chris Check's knows check. he doesn't have an ace, so he's going to bet the turn. Check. Ooh. Both Come players on. check. Wow. I'm, I'm actually shocked by how this is getting checked down now. There should be no bets. I mean, there's no way anybody could bet on the river. Like, what can he possibly bet? Uh, only well, represent, yeah, maybe. I mean, Paul will, yeah, Paul doesn't bet think 700 that by Chris Ward. And all Paul has is a buff catcher now. Yeah. Because of the way he played the hand. See, he gets yeah, himself yeah. in this situation, and now he's, he's like, down on himself. See, and, and, he, and, Paul, and here's the thing. Paul is not a terrible player. He just psychs himself out, and he... <laughs> He just makes a lot of zigs where he He just gets too worried, you know. Yeah, he he does like sometimes the opposite of what. Oh, and then he shows that he. Yeah. Oh man. If I was Chris, I'd show right now. I don't. I hate showing, but. Bam. There's perfect. The ticket. There we there's go. The ticket. I mean. Well, I mean, it's cutthroat. Once Paul's checked it twice, 
I would. I would. It, I wouldn't even have to look at my well, card. Well, because you have to. Yeah. There's no way. I mean, you don't expect them to have jacks there break. ever. You don't expect them to have anything. You expect them to have like, uh, who knows, yeah. pocket pair lower than the board maybe. Yeah. He just anytime there's he's so gun shy sometimes when. The, uh, as soon as that overcard hits, he just shuts it down. He hasn't quite mastered the thought of he took the aggressive lead pre-flop. Yeah. So you do Ace, first. kings, queens, those are all cards you can bet and rep to take down the hand at that moment. Well, and another thing, everybody views him as a really tight player, yeah. so take advantage of that situation. Just, I mean, it's the exact same thing we were talking about earlier. You have to know your own image yeah. and know it how everyone perceives you. We were talking about that same thing with him last week. He raised a hand with 2-3 offsuit. Robert announces a raise. Callers. And then an ace hit. 800. He had position, and he checked it to him, and he checked. Yeah, that's a big mistake. Yeah. I mean, you should be betting that board no matter what. Right. If you're going to rep that hand, yeah. and the ace hits, and they check it to you, you got to bet. Well, because it's standard. It's almost like a known thing in poker now. You know, if somebody raises, and you get in the pot, you check to the raiser, and, and then they fire, and usually continuation bet. It's almost like happens every time. So when somebody doesn't, it's either like... You feel like they're they're just trying to trap a weird trap, which that puts like red flags up every time somebody checks after they raise pre flop, or they're just totally missed. And Chris Ward act first. Somebody who has more aggressive will and take I think, advantage. I think, I think people give a, lot, give a lot of physical tells when they raise pre flop and check a flop when they Chris the calls. Monster, opposed to on a, on Robert a calls. Air ball. Yeah. They, I, mean, I they, agree. They telegraph it fairly easily. Like me, I you never. I mean, when I pop a monster, Ed you know calls. it. Yep. Start licking lips. Suited checks. I do that one bluffing too, though. <laughs> I just do weird you things. You guys heard her I'm, I'm telling all Bobby's tales right now. <laughs> Rob flops second pair. Chris flops bottom. Robert bet 600. Call. Heads up. Chris Ward call 600. So let's, let's get there in a the turn. Yahtzee. <laughs> <laughs> he is running like God right now. It's I'm pretty sure the turn is the well, new river. 1,200 bet by Robert. <laughs> it, it breaks more hearts. Call by Chris. Now, queen here. That's interesting. Ooh, that could, that could actually That's really slow, interesting. slow uh, Chris down. Or, wow. Or just a snap just mug. went check, check. Yes, he did. Oh, check, check. That's... I think, like, I think the value bets always should be coming out there. I mean, I mean, how scared could you really be of guys oversetting you? Exactly. I mean, if you think he had a top pair, but that card coming makes it even less likely that he had a jack. I mean, it's... It makes bottom pair look great, <laughs> let alone having, having trips. Yeah. I'm a big fan now of bet folding. I mean, he could bet, and then if he gets raised, fold. Especially, I mean, especially when you're value betting, you're not betting that much to begin with, you know? And so, if, so if a guy jams on you... Say, you got there, congratulations, see you next hand. Especially with his chip stack right now, it's not like he's losing out on a ton of, a huge percentage of his Suit Dan stack. calls. Well, that's the the quad hand, same thing. Like, I should be bet folding, even though I hit such a monster Chris on the Ward river. raises I mean, 400. Nobody's can ever raise the river, you know what I mean? Nobody's ever raising the river. You got blinded by the boat. But, Suit right. Dan calls. That's a tough spot, though, but Thanks, it's just because my hand's so, like, Suit Dan checks dark. I mean. What, what is your guys' opinion on check dark? I hate it. I okay, I do too. It's not that I hate it. It's happening Chris regardless. Chris bet 600. Like it's ha like you're always checking the razor anyhow. But what for? Yeah. Like you're not feeling obvious. Like who cares? All you're all you're doing is Sudan fold. Trying to let everyone else know that you've played poker before. Right. Like, it's it's, it's not because tricky. You've seen it on TV. Is the thing. I, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like I. I feel like it's guy. just like people are lazy. They don't want to wait their turn. They just want to get the check out of the way. But hey, if you find <laughs> a guy, if you find a guy does that all the time, and you know he's always checking. I'm betting dark. Why not? <laughs> I did bet, it. Bet dark? Interesting but, story. But you know he's never dunk betting, though. So that's yeah. Like, there's no, there's You're like, always going to have the opportunity. No, there's no extra wrinkle in his game, which is good for you, especially because obviously you have position on him if he's checking dark to you every time. That happened uh, in Columbus. I was playing against one of the dealers at the Horseshoe. He checked dark to me, and I bet dark, and I had aces. And he ended up flopping an open-ended straight flush draw and then raised my bet dark. All calls. <laughs> and I went all in, and he called, and he hit on the river. And every time I see him, I tell him how he owes me $200. <laughs> so if you're watching this, you owe me $200. Chris Ward calls. Robert checks but his option. It's a weird weird thing to me. I don't know. I don't really understand the point. Heads I mean, up, I, maybe. But I've seen guys do it here in a five-handed pot. You know? yeah. And if you flop something, you're just giving up too much value. 
I mean, I've done it before, but I almost have done it to save time. Rob gets there in a turn. Yeah, Rob makes trips on the turn. Only problem is I can get too Rob much action. Rob players check. Yeah, because you know Paul's going to fold fives. Especially now that <laughs> I came up. 400 bet by Robert. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. He's Call tilting. Paul yep, I knew that was going in. He, he's like, oh, he thinks his ace has good. He's like, nope. Yeah. He's like, I'm motorboating, cuz. Oh, Paul. Paul needs to smile. He just he's gonna continue to tilt himself until he. He does. He <laughs> he's been tilted since he woke up this morning, <laughs> thinking he, he's like I do have to go play. You know you can't you can't have a de that defeatist attitude. That's why I couldn't imagine if if what happened to me out there that hand happened to him. Oh my um, gosh. Corey Dak first. He might have burned down the table. I'm pretty sure we would have to get uh, vests in in the <laughs> in the booth. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're getting back to some. Uh, oh, and suited Dan with some an solid suited hands. Ace. Let's Head see of tens, Corey with sevens. Ned has position on him. Corey raises, Corey raises 600. I'm a big fan oh. of position. Ed calls 600. It's all the thing that matters. Oh. Good job, Dan. That's discipline right there. I just sometimes wonder if there's any rhyme or reason to the hands he calls. What it does. Absolutely not. <laughs> Sometimes it's just random. I mean, he'll fall with a jack four suited, but when he's got the a seven, you know, a chance to flop the nut flush. He... This could get interesting. If Corey wants to wrap a, a stronger hand than he has and turn it into a bluff, that does have the uh, redraw the straight. I will say that both these players know that each other plays kind of tight, so it might just go check check. Both players into check. oblivion. Because they both have quote unquote showdown value. Yeah. I think if Corey bets here, he's going to take it. I feel like this is his opportunity. I mean, he's checking to the Razor. Corey bets 800. Because it's such an awkward spot, though. I You always feel like it's just so awkward. Like, even, when you, even when you just check, check on the flop, and you lead turn out of position, Ed it calls. always feels awkward. I feel like you're always, it feels like a, like a delayed dunk bet. It kind of does, but it, it makes sense. I mean, you have to. If the guy's going to show that much weakness, you can't just let the hand get checked down in a spot like this. Check, check. Both there's players check. There's nothing wrong turning your hand to a buff. Okay. Oh. Wow. Ed with his 10 Did it go step. check, check on the river? Yes, yes it did. Sir. See, that's... I feel like if you're going to bet the turn, you gotta you're going to have river. to bet the river. Yeah. You can't bet the turn on a board like that, the way it was played, and then not bet the river. Betting the turn is hoping he folds. Betting turn river is having a plan. Yeah. And having a plan is, will get you some further than anything else. That's one thing I... You should never bet without knowing what you're going to do if something happens. Ed to act first. Yeah, That's so like, I feel like knowing Ed, uh, he should have known that Ed would have bet that flop if he had a hand. Like if he Absolutely. had part of that board. So him calling on the turn, I mean, is exactly the hand he had. It's almost like he played it, played it face up. Rob with these two right. here, not too much else. Yeah. Yeah, looks like... Chris is probably going <coughs> to get in here. With Chris bets 450. King 7 offshoot. This is one of those times I think a small 3 bet would be awesome. Raise to 1,000. Raise to 1,000. Robert. Raise to 1,000. Really good sizing. With his Robert yeah, headphones good. on out there. <laughs> well, just because, you know, he's been Chris calls. aggressive. I feel like, you know. Chris calls. Chris says positioning a thing. I don't even mind. Yeah. Robert bets 1500. So now he's, I'm assuming he's going to check fold unless he wants to, unless he thinks he's going to yeah. be tricky. Chris it's just, fold. It's just with these, with, these, with these stack sizes, it's basically everyone has an awkward stack. Yeah. There's not too much room to get too tricky with anybody. Let's he could have he could have flatted the raise too. I mean I don't. I mean you're in position with a pretty strong hand. I mean ace jack is strong enough to not three bet. And you get that flop, you might get get more from Chris. I'm always a fan of free betting someone that's been opening as often as Chris. I mean, yeah, I oh, me too. Say, as much as he's opening, especially right. when he, especially when he, he's been opening and getting called or getting, getting three bet, and he has flats. Yeah. With, with if you know he's going to do that, then you might yeah. as well get some money in the pocket. Exactly. Same situation with Dan earlier. He raises six and a half x and gets called by three four. Raises seven fifty. Why not? Suited Dan. Do it every time. Exactly. Yeah. And all, I, I mean, his small three bet was fine. But he could, I mean, I don't know. I don't know exact chip text, but he could, he could have put out a huge one, got called, 
put him the exact same way and make got more flush. value. Yeah. That's a new term right there. Free bet for value. And so there's threes here. We well, made what up. do you guys feel here when you get an under the gun raise and you got threes in a big blind? Um, Ed, Ed calls. Well, against Dan, I would probably call one time and see see what happens. I don't like taking off too much of my stack, but I mean, if it's only like 10% or so. Yeah. Why not? And Dan flops a miracle. <laughs> Everyone knew he was getting there. Boom goes the dynamite. And he's <laughs> Bet twelve fifty by suited Dan. See, I, th I think it's a problem with a lot of players that on a on a straight draw and flush draw, they feel like it's automatic to just blast the pot. Yeah, Guess and they always bet big too. They always try to like yeah. protect. Give, a, give them a chance. Yeah. Do something weird. Bet less than you did preflop. Yeah. Why not? Exactly. Or even the same amount. I've done. I'm, I do that a lot, especially in cash. My C bets now are, are a lot tinier than they used to be. I've been saving a lot of money. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, you know, <laughs> I used to bet really big on the flop, and then Ed if folks. I get raised, I'm, it hurts my feelings. <laughs> and your feelings are all that matter to us. <laughs> Not much table chatter at this table. No, all the chatter people are, are gone. <laughs> yeah, Marco's gone. <laughs> Marco's yeah. gone. Mark doesn't talk Dr. Dr. B. Mills is sitting in with us. Yep. Yeah, Bobby and Marco were out. So <laughs> they both were If I was out there after every hand, you'd be like, uh, you'd hear me say, nice bluff, man. What'd you have? And they'll show me. A couple of players with the, uh, you talk Paul into the original Dempsey. That's so many things. hands this year. <laughs> it's amazing. I think I should write a book on that, on how to get information <coughs> from players. See, so like I've see if Dan gets a walk here. Yep. Oh, of course. Dr. Rungood. My personal opinion, I I would be raising the small blind there, or at least calling with that hand. Why not? Especially with the you know the dynamic we have here, we have a guy obviously waiting to accumulate points and a tight guy to his right. Yep. Dan has to respect that. I like to mix in limping from the small blind when it folds to me, and then just auto c betting like any flop. Robert tech first. I mean, I just I, I, I think I, I, instead of limping, I just to double and then just mash any flop. Yeah. Why not get that extra extra blind from your from your opponent? Not a whole lot going on. You could, but then it's it's kind of a, a repetitive pattern of you always raising and then. Why not every single? I don't know. <laughs> Limping's like my biggest pet peeve. That well, yeah. saying it's a <laughs> <of grace. laughs> What's so classic about it? It's the worst. Chris gets a walk? No kidding. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's something I picked on, up on watching that uh, Brain Inc. dude. Just sit and goes. Brainiac. 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 Brain 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 <laughs> like Brain Inc. or something. Yeah, he's got his own <laughs> avatar. That's what he taught me. Limp, limp in from the small blind and then just auto see bet. It works like so much. You save money by not raising, you know. Well, yeah, it's like, I mean, it's like, you know, if you're playing heads up, you know, in a single table format. Mm -hmm. He's missing so often. Why not take whatever you can? I got mine on. Suda Dan with 7 8 off. Chris with King 9 of clubs. Dan says, I refuse to play. <laughs> Chris will raise. Of course. And I think he's going to get a call for sure. Chris calls 200. <laughs> Robert checks his option. We'll see some 9s in the flop. That was a check dark by Chris. I don't know. Two players. Two. Well, I don't think you do. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. You guys got a phone ahead for these things. 350. <laughs> 350 bet by Chris Ward. I love the action. Robert, Robert calls. No, I want, I want the case nine to come. Better and then the ten. Yes. <laughs> there we go. I want I want somebody to get punished. 600 bet by Chris Ward. Call by Robert. Such quick calls. Five. None, no thought at all. Just I'm calling. Oh, this is going to be a... This uh, eliminates some of the chops. 600 bet by Chris uh, Ward. Rob might have had in mind. Robert calls. Look at that. Didn't even stop to think. Just call, call, call. I got a pair. I call. I got a pair. I call. Uh, that's a that's I've been I've, I've been, been doing too much of that I've been lately myself. Eight to nine of the king. It's not a chop. I've been victim of that once or twice. Especially when someone bets each street so fast. Yeah. It's almost like, well, they're not thinking. I'm not gonna think either. <laughs> they just roll with it. <laughs> but moves Corey Dak first. Shut up, 
You couldn't hear me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could hear Chris and Paul well, Queen you Ten. Your ass <laughs> way back was that the first quads of the season? <laughs> I don't remember anybody ever getting quads yet. Probably the first flop quads or first natural yeah, I quads. Don't I don't remember anybody getting quads. Raised to 425 well, of by Ed. Me, I run so bad, I have the worst luck. Ed, so, Ed raises with Jack Eight off here. Jack Eight, Ed, was, Jack Ed, eight was a favorite hand of mine for a little while. Yeah. Ed stepping up. During my losing streak. Um, Robert calls of and eight Ron jack offs. No thought to that. It doesn't raise very often. Paul dunks his cards in the muck. So he calls out a position from the small blind with clean five suited. Maybe he has a plan. He knows Ed's a tight player, so maybe he has a plan to steal the spot well, away from him. I think all the queens are gone. And he flops the five. With a backdoor flush draw. Backdoor. See how this action plays out here. I, I would love to see Ed just three barrel right here. One minute, 40 seconds left in the blinds. Well, on this board, I mean, it's a great board to but bet, check for yeah. sure, at least. Well, see, now he's getting cold on the turn. 725. Robert bet 725. Uh, yeah, he loses all momentum in the hand. Right. I mean, that's the type. You're looking for a dry board like that, King High with like Ed Folds. King mm -hmm. High, Rainbow. I mean, that's that's yours all day for the pre flop razor. They may call the flop, but then if you fire yeah, on a turn, it's like hard for them to call, especially yeah. when the ten comes. Even more possibilities. Especially if you play out of the blind. You know, obviously, like, you know, I got some money in there, I might as well call. So they do, and, and you know, they're, they're so marginal so often. Before the end of the hand, make sure you count your chips so you can let Sometimes you just actually marge your own. Yeah. I can't believe it's not butter. You never would have guessed. I'm going to have some more after the stand, so it's all good. I think it would be an awesome cash game. Action on Ed. Suited Dan with ace five, Rob with an ace deuce suited. And Dan pulls an eight spot. Corey Man, he is, he is he is the Mitt Romney of the crew tonight. Definitely. Call He's trying to keep by that Chris. lead. He, know, he knows now that he has a really good shot at keeping close because I'm knocked out. Robert raises to 900. I'm not coming back. Well, that's there you go. Good move by Corey. He just stuffs All in, in by Corey. 3,000. 3,200. 200. 200. Love that. I really doubt he's going to call. I think if there's I mean, anybody at the table that could, he makes some calls. I just don't know how, how good of a call that would have been. Oh, it's a terrible call. After this hand will be on a 10 minute break? Uh, I mean, just I've because. I've seen him make some calls, though, that boggle the mind. Just because. You know, Robert calls? Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Six I think Suda Dan's rooting for an ace right here. Ace deuce. Oh, for sure. Nice. He's flop the then he can wheel. coast. Steel wheel trains do it. Wow. I see it. No, you do. I know. It's it, hard. Looks oh, like it's it looked like the ace of spades. There goes all those outs. Ugh. Wait for oh, it. Oh, the counterfeit. <laughs> Wait, for Wait for it. it. And someone's mad. Hmm. Boom. Boom. Oh, oh, nothing. So close. <laughs> that was so close. That was <laughs> Corey doubles up. All right. We'll be on break now. I'll be back.